You Can Do Both podcast. This is Court. And this is Ashley. And we are coming at you live from Boston on spooky Friday the 13th. (laughs) I love Friday the 13th. I think it's just a reason to believe in superstition. (laughs) For me personally, I find it lucky. This 13th is also one of my best friend's birthdays, and I'm actually going to her birthday party in Maine tomorrow, so I'm so excited. But yeah, hopefully you guys are all having a lucky, enjoyable Friday the 13th. And it's not the 13th now that they're listening to it. No, but I hope in the past. In the past. Last week, I hope you were okay. (laughs) Is a better way of saying it. Yep. And on the other hand, I hate the Friday the 13th. I will be staying indoors. I completely forgot that it was the 13th until you told me. Maybe I should have just let you go about life. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But another, like, it's like, oh, it's fall. Like, it's now mid-September. Yeah. Except it's 80 degrees. I got back from Miami yesterday, and I got off the plane expecting it to be frigid. Yeah. And it's in the 80s again. Yeah, yesterday I walked to Back Bay. I was sweating. I was in a tank top. It was hot again. I don't know what's going on. And that's on global warming. (laughs) And that's on global warming. (laughs) Ashley, it's been a hot minute. I haven't seen you in a week or two. Yeah. How is everything going? How's life? What have you been up to? Life is good. I'm at another peak. We just came out of a valley. (laughs) We've been peaking this, guys, the way, every time I tell Courtney I'm, like, doing well or something, the next day it drops, or whenever I tell her, I'm like, ugh, it's one of those days, I wake up the next morning and everything's golden again, Mm -hmm. and at this point, I'm not even going to say if it's a good or bad day, I'm just, like, in the moment, being present, Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, we're just going to put one foot in front of the other and enjoy and take what life throws at us. I love it. I feel like this entire year, you've had such a good like mindset even if if you aren't doing well yeah I feel like you've been so good with your mindset and like rebounding when things aren't going too hot I agree I think I'm back to my positive optimistic self um not overly optimistic you know I gotta be real sometimes Mm -hmm. but just knowing it's all gonna work out and to let it all work out yeah I've had a killer week though I've been girl bossing tell me so hard tell me more Work has been just incredible. I absolutely killed the presentation that I had. Wow. I took an intro to asset management course yesterday in the afternoon. I like signed up for a course on my own. My company offers through like Learning Central and those different courses that you can enroll in. Yeah. Everybody gets a license. But this was a course that specifically my company puts on and you can enroll in. So I enrolled in it a couple months ago and then it came up on the calendar and I was like, all right, I have my course this week. So I was back in college oh my taking God. notes and it was actually really fun. So I just feel like I'm expanding my knowledge base. Yeah. Um, you can do both is thriving, which we'll get into it in just is. one moment. So, yeah, I just feel like I've been busy on the go, but all great things. I've also been very present in my friendships and seeing people doing things outside of work, my relationship. I just think I'm balancing everything well. And at this moment in time, everything's in a really good place. Wow. I love that. How are you doing? I'm doing well, honestly. Thank goodness. Um, I feel like people and that listen to You Can Do Both that also know me personally have been reaching out to me being like is you good (laughs) when they listen to the podcast and I'm like yes I'm doing well but more context is just startup life is no joke but yeah as time goes on I just I'm obviously like getting better in my role I'm like feeling more confident in things that I'm doing and then also I'm just like mentally being more okay with like not being perfect which is something I've realized I like is a deep rooted thing of mine. Like I like have perfectionism around everything that I do, but anyway, mentally I'm doing well. I just got off of a long work trip. It was a founder retreat. So like three days of mind, body and business programming for 50 founders in Miami. And I was at this hotel, this lovely five-star resort 
from Saturday till yesterday, which was Thursday. Um, and yeah, just absolutely exhausted, but I feel like I always leave those events like so inspired, just hearing other people's stories and being connected with like amazing people that are doing things. And I feel like it's just very expansive and it, it makes me think like anyone can do anything they want in their lives if they just really take the risk and take action. I feel like pretty amazing and inspired. Um, I met some amazing founders that like I've admired forever. Like the founder of Chill House, Cindy Ramirez was a speaker. Um, the founder of, D- of Crown Affair, which is literally my favorite hair care brand, Diana Cohen. She was a speaker and I've actually met her before a few years ago and we followed each other on Instagram. But like it's one of those things where she meets people all of the time yeah. and people admire her. So like I wasn't expecting anything. And she literally remembered me and was like, Aww. how is everything? Like, when did you leave Vista Print? Like, Wait, we were, that's amazing. Yeah. Like she was so, so, so sweet. Um, and she like it just made me fall in love with her and her brand and what she's building even more. Um, and then the founder of Gorgie, which is the yes. wellness drink. Yeah. They were like, they gifted stuff and she is a really good friend of my founder. So she spoke as well. Nice. Um, so that was awesome. I took the day out of work today. Nice. I'm, I'm recharging and yeah, I'm excited to like be present this weekend and just chill. Um, and looking into this month, I have like kind of, I have another long sprint before an event that's happening at the beginning of October and then I'm going to be chilling for the rest of the year. So love it. Yeah. Life's good. I'm inspired. And yeah, I'm ready for all the things that are happening this upcoming few weeks, especially with You Can Do Both. Yes. Shall we get into it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So today we were fully prepared to sell you guys on our upcoming community event on September 26th. And we released the signups yesterday and you guys filled every single spot. And more. All 75 spots, and we officially have a wait list. Yep. Which is so insane. We are super grateful. So for people who listened or saw the social media posts on our stories and sent it to your friends, we're excited to get the community together. And for those that don't know what the event is, it's not too late to sign up on the wait list so we can tell you guys a little bit about it. And then for those that did reserve a spot, um, We'll tell you the details of it so you can get even more excited. So it is on September 26th at 6.15. Essentially, we'll send a specific meeting spot to those who RSVP'd via Partyful. Um, And then it's essentially just going to be a hot girl walk, a post work on a Thursday. Hang out, chat, meet some new friends, come with some friends. And then we're going to end up at the glow bar location on Newbury street that just opened just a few weeks ago. Uh, once we get there, there will be some lovely goodie bags with a lot of different skincare products that glow bar actually sells. So the goodie bag we were just told originally it was going to be valued at like a hundred dollars. And we just found out that it's valued at $230. No, guys, like this is probably the main reason it sold out so fast. Once yeah. you guys saw we were with Globar and we are so excited and grateful to have been able to partner with them. Yeah. The goodie bags are insane. 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 I'm most excited for IS Clinical, I think yes. it's called. They have these um, like peeling, peeling cloths or something. They're like really, really nice. I know. And my mom got them for us for Christmas like a little starter pack yeah and I my skin is had never looked better yeah but yeah so there's gonna be goodie bags and then there will be drinks like light refreshments and just some more hanging around getting to meet the glow bar team learning a bit about what they offer and yeah it's gonna be amazing yeah and then for those who happen to be living under a rock and maybe you haven't heard of glow bar I actually didn't know of them until we started partnering with them so they are essentially a mini facial place and i wanted to just tell you guys a little bit about my experience so even if you didn't reserve a spot we also do have a discount code for you guys i believe it's 15 percent off it's ycdb15 we will triple check that and put it in the description so if you guys want to book your first facial there uh, feel free to use our code and you can get some money off of your first facial and Essentially, Globar provides 30-minute facials, so instead of going and being there for an hour and paying 
two hundred something dollars for a hydrofacial or an extraction or whatever it is. Um, they you don't even choose from a list of facials like you would at any other spa. That you go in, you tell them about your skincare routine, what you struggle with, what your skin's like, and then right on the spot, they'll recommend, they're like, okay, I think your skin's going to need this. I have super dry skin, so we did a chemical peel, we did a hydrating mask, they did the red and blue light therapy for acne, and I forget what the red one does, but something good for your skin, and then they put on like a moisturizer to leave and I mean I was truly glowing yeah I was freaking glowing I love the way it's 30 minutes just because we are busy people 100% and it's clearly custom like I Ashley's talked about her experience all the time of kind of walking into a spa in the south end and getting a hydrofacial and then it literally ruined her skin because it was the worst decision I ever made like when you think about it it's like you should never go in and and think you know what you need a professional should recommend it so I love that it's quick I love that it's custom it's affordable and you clearly got what you what you needed and you said your skin looks amazing right now you just got it yesterday it looks so good so with that being said we are so excited and so grateful to be partnering with glow bar if you did reserve a spot we will see you there and we are so excited if you haven't hop on the wait list I know people's plans will change who knows? Maybe there'll be a rain date. We didn't really think about that piece. So get on the wait list in case a bunch of people can't make it so we can see you there. Feel free to use code YCDB15 and stay tuned for more community events. Today, we're going to be talking about practicing presence in our very busy lives. I think this is something that everyone always needs a reminder of, especially the thought of this episode came to me when I was at my work trip because we did a an amazing breathwork session one morning and just I had never done breathwork before there's different like meditative things that people can do that's not breathwork but I feel like it was a reminder of how busy life can be and how important and how drastically your day can change when you just take a moment of time to practice presence in your day in your week in your month and so this episode is going to serve as a reminder and give you tips and tricks for being able to give yourself that space and time to refill your cup throughout your day so that you can continue on and not feel burnt out in all of our busy lives. I love that. I'm really excited to talk about it. I feel like I have been channeling presence recently. And honestly, this whole year, I do think that's what's kept me sane is just knowing, hey, all I can do is be here right now. So I might as well enjoy it. And outside of just our individual busy lives, can we talk about how quickly time is moving? No, it's going by so fast. No, it's terrifying. And I think post-college is when I started to realize how quickly time has moved. And every year it gets faster and faster. Like, how are we about to enter 2025? It feels like we were just at Chamonix on our trip, like, two months ago, if that. Meanwhile, it's been close to eight months Yeah, I think this happens every single year, every single time we change into a new month, specifically around the summertime. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, hold on, summer just started. How have we already passed June, July? Oh my goodness, it's September. Yeah. And then not even can you enjoy September. We're in the middle of September already. Yeah. And then holiday season is upon us. And whenever it hits holidays, it's the year's over pretty much. The the year's over. Like it's Christmas right now. Yeah. It's literally Christmas. Yeah. And I think presence is what allows you to like slow down time. Obviously, there's no physical possible way to slow down time, but it helps you have a bit more of a slower life or have slower pockets of your day. So, 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 so important. So let's kick off with tips for slowing down time. Carving out at least one to two weekends per month where you have no plans And I think this is important specifically because when you get into a relationship with someone, even if you're not in a relationship, but I kind of noticed it more when I started to date Matt, your lives and your schedules are now one. Mm -hmm. So if Matt has a work event where he is a plus one, that is now on my calendar. If a member of his family has a birthday party, that is now on my calendar. And I feel like we all have such busy lives 
But then when it becomes times two, there's one weekend this upcoming month where I don't have a family gathering or celebration on both of our sides. And so carving out like and saying no to a plan I know a lot of things are out of your control and like for example you're going to see baby Izzy for her first birthday this weekend like there's obviously things that you need to go to and you want to go to but carving out and saying no at least to preserving one weekend for you is like truly only a way that you can like not burn out and not feel like oh my god I'm being pulled in all these different directions I agree something else and it just clicked when you said when you're in a relationship, all of your plans kind of become one. I was telling Court about my awesome weekend that I had last weekend and how it just felt so good. And mm-hmm. I think I was practicing presence. A key reason it went so well was Joe and I actually separated and did our own things. So we were like ships passing in the night. Like we yeah. would each go and do something in the day, but then we would connect at night. He would do something with the guys. I would do something with the girls. And then everybody came together. And it felt like the day lasted longer. It felt more fresh and fun. So many different people to see. So many different conversations to be had. And I think it's kind of nice if you can separate the two. Because most of the time, and most events like birthdays, you don't have a choice. But you you both want to be there. So when you can find time to have your own schedule and carve out a plan for you... It's challenging, but I think if you get into the habit of that, instead of just assuming you're going to do everything with your partner that weekend, this weekend I'm away. I'm going to dinner with my old roommate tonight. I'm going to my friend's birthday and spending the night in Maine. But then on Sunday, we're golfing with my old manager and his wife. So So it's like we're doing our own things and then coming back together. Yeah. No, I love it. And then also like the concept of carving out a weekend it's not just to do nothing but it's to have that room for spontaneity and like when you can wake up and be like what do I want to do today like there's truly no better feeling than waking up on a Saturday and being like I have no plans what should I do oh let me go to the farmer's market oh let me do this oh let me let me see who's around like yeah I feel like those weekends are always the most fun because they're so unexpected because you didn't have anything on the calendar and those are always the weekends that feel like time is slowing down yeah because you're not racing and thinking about the next event you have to be to and you're not on a time crunch because you have to be back at home to get ready for an event at six exactly and I think that's the key to presence yes exactly did we crack the code I think we did crack the code nice (laughs) and to give an example of that um this past Sunday it just so happened that a bunch of people were free and also in the city, which never happens in a huge group of people. But the girls just had loose plans. We were like, hey, who's around? Let's do something. At one point, it was going to be a bike ride. 30 minutes later, we were like, oh, let's go to Umbria Rooftop in the North End before they put the roof on for the season. We look it up. It doesn't open till four. (laughs) It's like 12 o'clock at this point. We're like, you know what? Let's settle on brunch. Everybody meet there at this time. So we went to the South End, we sat at Banyan Bar, we like had no reservation, we just walked in, we got a table outside, nobody was around, it was so quiet, and I truly felt like we were living in a Sex in the City episode. (laughs) It was four girls, we were all just talking about relationships and dating and our life and work and this and that, and we talked about everything and just laughed and had ordered a bunch of apps and Nobody was in a rush to do anything. Yeah. And then after that, um, McKenna and I's boyfriends were together. They were golfing. So McKenna and I were like, oh, let's go meet up with the guys. They're together at my apartment. And the girls were like, perfect, we'll tag along. So we like walk back together. We're all hanging out here. And I had this moment where I was like, wait, why do I feel like I'm in college? It was only like three or four o'clock. We still had many more hours in the day it was the first true Sunday football and everyone's like okay guys like what do we want to do and I don't know the last time I had that feeling when it was oh what do we want to do but not just with Joe and I it was with a whole group of friends yeah and nobody had anywhere to be so fun so we walked over to Beantown pub and ordered some nachos got some beer played some pool people trickled out when they needed to and it was just such a peaceful fun day and it brought me back to the simplicity of you actually don't need a busy schedule you just need to be around people you love yeah that also 
is the best feeling when you're hanging out with someone and you're like, wait, I don't want this to end. Like, yeah. let's see what else we can do. Let's exactly. see what else we can do. And to actually have the time that allows you to, to live like that is the best feeling ever. Yeah. So I think that's difficult to cultivate. Yeah. Because what are the chances everybody's free on well, the weekend? Well, I think that the, when you first said that, I was like, that is the sign that summer is over because people are in their home city and they don't have to be jetting off to weekend plans and road trips and whatever. So hopefully, I mean, that is easier to cultivate now that we're heading into winter. Yeah. We have to crack the code on that. (laughs) Hey, everybody, reserve this Sunday, three weeks ahead. Yeah. yeah, Don't know what we're doing. We're going to do something. Yeah. Or you just have many different groups of friends and then you just plant the seed. I can barely handle one group of No, I know. I'm not (laughs) saying for me. I'm talking to the people out here. (laughs) I definitely can't. Oh my God. Stressful. (laughs) It is. Yeah. But more of that. Okay. The next piece that helps us practice presence is doing no phone activities and no phone hangouts. So even the example of going to brunch with the girls is a better way to practice presence than everybody getting around to watch The Bachelorette. Not saying one is better than the other, but you need, I think, more of the brunch activities away from screens. Me and a couple of the girls, Seaport does this movie night, which I actually had no idea, but it's where the Seaport little shops are in Boston and where they do the Christmas markets. And every Monday night, which is so fun on weekdays. What a nice little post-work activity. Um, they have a little projector. Everybody shows up. It's free popcorn. They have food trucks. You can bring, I got like buffalo chicken dip from Trader Joe's across the street, brought it over. You can rent chairs. You can bring chairs. So fun. It was so fun. And we watched Mean Girls and it was so nice. We were outside. I was chatting with the girls and then the movie started. I didn't even look at my phone the whole time. And It was so fun because when was the last time you watched Mean Girls with 100 plus people? Yeah. Everybody's giggling at the same moment. It was so wholesome and pure. But there was a couple times where, you know, I looked around me and so many people were just sitting there scrolling on their phones. And I couldn't comprehend showing up to a movie night with such a cool scenery in the middle of the city so fun yeah and there's a movie playing there's a screen in front of you and you're still going to be on your phone I think there's it's so easy two hours out of your night of your Monday night nothing crazy is happening put your phone away enjoy the present moment it was just so cute and pure but I think even in that same event some people were practicing presence and others were not and my theory is the people who were practicing presence and getting off of their phones and enjoying the moment had a better time. A hundred percent. It's like you can be like, why be there when you could be on your own couch at home and scrolling through Instagram? And we've also all experienced this post work. Sometimes you just have a long day. You want to melt into the couch yeah. and raw on TikTok, And that's okay sometimes. But how quickly does time fly? All of a sudden, you're like, wait, I've been scrolling for an hour. Yeah. The amount of things, if you weren't on your phone, even you just could have picking done. up around the yeah. house, you're like, wait, I actually have so much time after work. And this is a revelation I have maybe once a week. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, I still, it's only 7.30. Mm-hmm. I still have time to do things. So it just shows, I think, the more we can get off of our phones, the more we can slow down time. Yeah, 100%. And then... For me, getting off the phone is post-work walks. It's, I want to pick up tennis. And I know I'm like, I'll this is kind of late you. in the game because it's about to turn winter. But like, I would love to pick up tennis. Like, hobbies, literally anything. We're about to enter puzzle season. We're about to get into soup season. Like, start cooking in the kitchen. Just when, exactly like you said, when you get off your phone, you get off your screens, you realize how much time you actually have to do things in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. And so just extracurricular hobbies are so important. And Vola is about to start up. So Guys. we are we are back on our kickball team. No, I'm, I'm actually so really excited. I'm so excited. Kickball is so fun. So Monday nights we will have that activity. Some sometimes games are at six PM, other times games are unfortunately at like ten PM. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's going to be an, another hour at least that's dedicated to no screen time. And then 
potentially dinners afterwards and more friend time. Yeah. So finding little things like that that get you away from doom scrolling is so important. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. Another way to practice presence is setting intentional time for the people in your life. So whether it be family, friends, yourself, like almost you don't need to time block and make it as formal, but like it's kind of on your calendar. Like I am going to go out to dinner with my parents on Friday night. And like, I think maybe as I'm growing older and I'm not seeing the people in my life, whether that be my parents or my friends as often as I once did, it's automatically making me want to cherish every second that I have with them. And so just literally going in with the intention of whatever you're doing with, I am not going to have my phone out. I am going to be present and ask all the questions and laugh and what have you, I think is just so important because it's very easy to sit on a couch with your best friend and have your phone now and do the things, but just scheduling the time, whether it be for yourself or with people and just like establishing at the beginning, like let's not have our phones out at dinner or say you're with a bunch of people and other people are on their phones. Like you put your phone away and kind of start the movement of other people doing the same. I think it's just so important to be present when you're with everybody that you love. I agree. And you can even initiate this by when you're at lunch or something, put your phone, say, okay, all phones in the middle. Yeah. Like you can be cheesy about it. Yeah. Whatever works. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But somebody has to make the first move and I think it should be you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Or it's the first person that touches their phone has to pay for the dinner. Love it. Jared. 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 (laughs) Jared loses every time. Uh, This next one we talk about all the time. You guys have heard this. You guys have heard us say this since the beginning of the podcast, but stop saying yes to plans that you are not 100% excited to go to. Now, I want to put a little asterisk here because the movie night, I had the longest day. I was exhausted. And the girls were like, hey, are you coming? And I was like, I'm still home, but yeah, let me just change and go. And that was something in the moment, it was so easy to melt into the couch and put on TV. But I was like, no, this is actually going to be like really fun. And I guess that speaks to the event that I said yes to originally. Yeah. So I think only say yes to plans that you're 100% excited about, but be real with yourself and say, do I need to push myself a little bit? Yeah. Because the easy answer is to always you know, stay home or it's the opposite, opposite depending say, on the person. Yes to everything. So yeah, yeah, it definitely depends. But I think the more plans you have on your calendar that you're genuinely excited for, the reason behind that is maybe you're connecting with old friends and those are all pieces that make up a picture of why you'd want to be more present there. Yeah. Like tonight I'm getting dinner with my old roommate and I'm so excited to see her. We have so much to catch up on. Like I won't, I know for a fact I won't be looking at my phone the entire night. Yeah. So that's something I'm looking forward to and it's going to give me an opportunity to be present. Yeah. I fall victim to, and I don't know why, or I do know why, but I need to do a little bit more psychoanalysis. I, I always like get excited about plans. I say yes to everything. I overcommit, overbook my calendar. And then when it comes down to it, I'm like, oh my God, like, why do I not want to go like right before? And sometimes, and even though it's something that I, I know I will have fun at, I think it's the anxiety of having too much on my calendar and like not being productive during that time or like not or being anxious about oh my god but I'm gonna if I stay out late tonight then I'm gonna be exhausted tomorrow and I'm not gonna be able to make my workout class all this to say I listened to Lauren Bostick one of the skinny confidential's episode one time and she said this recommendation for when you say yes and no to plans that I feel like has really helped me say yes or no from the beginning and not kind of develop this anxiety right before she said that if you got asked a plan for two weeks ago and in that moment you say would I want to do this right now if the answer is not oh my god yes I would love to do this tonight then rethink your answer a little bit and maybe say no to it because you're always going to have the most excitement kind of like in the moment and that day whereas when you when other things fill up on your calendar and by the time it gets to it 
like you're only going to have less excitement from that exact time that you were pitched to the plan. Yeah. And so I've kind of used that as like a guide for in the moment, whether or not I can commit myself or not. And I feel like it's helped me so much be more excited for things that are on my calendar and not have a crap ton of things that I'm not as much excited for. Totally. Micro joys are such a fun topic that we always kind of come down to. Um, or we always bring up, I think we, have we had an episode all about micro joys? If we haven't, haven't. we've had it all planned out. We just and then we just didn't do it. it. Yeah. So micro joys, if anyone's unfamiliar, is the little joys throughout the day. And there was actually, there's a whole book on micro joys that I learned of a couple of years ago where in life it's filled with peaks and valleys. Like you literally mentioned at the beginning, there's really high highs, there's really low lows, but actually the majority of your life is spent either on the come down or come up to those peaks and valleys. And so in order to have a healthy, happy, present life, you need to find the little things in your day that bring you joy. Micro joys look different for everyone. So Sometimes it's the morning routine. Sometimes it's the post-work routine. It could be simple things like the coffee order in the morning or how you chef up your coffee or that moment of peace on the couch when you're journaling or reading a book before you get pulled into your nine to five job. And so the more of these you have, the more present you can be and feel less pulled in all these different directions by creating this space and little moments of peace throughout your day. Yes, I've been more aware of my micro joys, I think because I haven't done these micro joys in a while, so I forgot how much I love it. So a couple that come to mind is the Spotify daylist that I just learned that Spotify had this summer. And I'm not the only one because I told somebody, Dana didn't know about it and Brie didn't know about it. Okay, good. So I'm really not the only one. And if you don't know what the day list is, it's just every day it pops up with a playlist of music that you may like. And so it's new, fresh songs all the time. And they come up with this cheeky little title for your playlist. And genuinely just reading the title of it brings me joy. (laughs) And then playing it. I mean, it's so exactly what I love for music. And I just feel feel main character like I'm so happy there's not somebody talking in my ear you know as we're talking in your ear right now I think there's a time and place for podcasts but if you're somebody like me I can take it to an extreme where it's like I'm constantly listening to people talking and sometimes it's nice to just turn it off and enjoy the music did you just look up your day I just looked and I'm literally like holding back tears of laughter Wait, can you look up yours too? See what you're... Because basically the day list, it takes the music that you normally listen to at certain times of the day and that's how it creates the cheeky title. And my day list for right now is Happy Folk Granola Vibes Friday Morning. (laughs) Like, I love that. That is so funny and so true. That can't not make you smile. Yeah. Mine is obsessed power pop early morning oh wow i feel like they're both very on brand yeah usually my other ones are usually more chill maybe that's my afternoon one um but this yeah there's a lot of sabrina carpenter she is my girl recently yeah it's good stuff so all to say the day list is definitely one if you don't do that often or maybe it just slipped to the back of your mind bring it back. It will definitely make you smile or make you question or just make you giggle every time that you re and they update, I think three times a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is just so fun. So good. And then my second little micro joy that I found is getting back into the kitchen and chefing it up. I love cooking mostly because it's challenging when I'm trying a new recipe and I never know if the outcome, sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's just not that good, but I enjoy throwing different ingredients in and making a recipe my own even if Joe doesn't really like that he's like just follow the recipe (laughs) and then we would know it would be good but I found a hobby that I just enjoy that's off of a screen and I could be in the kitchen for two hours and I don't even notice yeah so good so yeah what are some of your micro joys uh walks coffees I'd say phoning a friend. I like rarely do that. But when I do, I'm like, oh my God. Or just like calling a family member. Um, 
also journaling and practicing gratitude, which I think is how we want to close this episode out, is gratitude is a really special like feeling and experience in the sense that no matter what's going on in your life, if you're if you're trying to think of what you're grateful for, it automatically brings a sense of like positivity and optimism to how you're feeling. So if everything is shitting the fan in your life, but you're like, at least I have a roof over my head. At least I have a best friend that I can call on and vent to. At least I have the sun shining today. It truly just like turns your outlook around, even if it's just for an hour or whatever it is, it's so important. And then journaling kind of does the same thing where it just kind of gets you out of the hustle and bustle of life and allows you to say, this is what happened in my day. This is how I'm feeling. This is how I'd like to feel. This is what's going on in my life tomorrow that I'm excited about. And just kind of brain dumping makes you really ground yourself and where you are rather than thinking of, I have to jet off here. I have this to do tomorrow. I didn't do this today. It like once again takes you to that present moment that helps you appreciate where you are. I love that. So friendly reminder that presence and slowing down time is entirely up to you and you can be in control of those micro joys that you add to your day, to the plans that you make, to the plans that you say no to. So if you're feeling like you're running and going a million miles a minute, take a moment, take a beat, rest, recharge, and then literally audit your life to see what you want more of what you want less of and hopefully live a more present life. I really do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I think this is the reminder we all need. We are basically in the middle. The second half of the year always goes by the fastest and we are smack dab in the middle of this fast period. Mm -hmm. So really, if you made it this far in the episode, really take a moment, take this into your day, take it into your weekend And with that, we'll talk to you next week. We love you. Thanks for listening. Share this with a friend that needs to practice more presence in his or her life. And we hope you have the best weekend. Bye. Bye.